Go ahead and come all the way in up to this podium, please. Okay, at this time, the court calls number 32 on the calendar, Annie Anderson. May I please ask you to state your name and date of birth? Annie Anderson, 12273. Thank you very much, Ms. Anderson. And I understand that I have a lawyer from the county attorney's office that wishes to appear on that matter. May I have the appearance of counsel for the state, please? Uh, good evening, Your Honor. Joshua Clark from the state. Good evening, Mr. Clark. Thank you and welcome. Okay, Ms. Anderson, you are here on a grand jury warrant. A state grand jury was convened and returned an indictment against you. Um, that indictment contains one count of murder in the first degree, which is a class one felony, one count of child abuse, which is a class two felony, and one count of abandonment or concealment of a dead body, which is a class five felony. All of these offenses are alleged to have been committed October 10th of 2005. The grand jury has found probable cause to support these allegations. Your next court hearing on this warrant will be an arraignment hearing April 18th at 8.30 in the morning in the Superior Court downtown. Before I discuss any release conditions or release eligibility on this matter, may I please have argument and or recommendation from the state? Thank you, Your Honor. The state is simply asking the court to affirm the grand jury warrant. Okay. Um, I am going to affirm the grand jury warrant. That means that you will be held non-bondable at least until your first court hearing on April 18th at 830. The reason for that is at least one of these offenses does carry eligibility for the death penalty. Um, and that offense is the first degree murder charge. Ms. Anderson, I am not suggesting to you that at this time a determination has made that the death penalty will be sought in this case. I am simply explaining that because it is possible, uh, because that first degree murder charge does carry the option of a capital charge, um, Arizona law authorizes this court to hold you without bond at least until that first hearing on the 18th. Anything further I need to address on this matter, Mr. Clark? No, Your Honor, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Anderson, reminding you that you have the right to remain silent and that anything you say in this hearing could be used against you and acknowledging that you do not have the benefit of legal counsel in here this morning, or excuse me, this evening. Um, did I tell you that I appointed a lawyer to represent you? I don't think we covered that. You are entitled to a lawyer. Um, so I have appointed a lawyer to defend you in this case, but as, as you can see, that, that lawyer is not in this hearing tonight. Um, so understanding that you don't have the benefit of that lawyer tonight, you will have that lawyer at your hearing on the 18th. Understanding that lawyer is not in the courtroom tonight, that you have the right to remain silent, and that should you choose not to exercise that right and speak, anything could be used against you that you say tonight. Is there anything you would like to state to the court? No. Okay. Thank you very much then. You can go ahead and step back to your left and get your paperwork. Mr. Clark, you are free to be excused or you are free to continue to observe the rest of the calendar. I will leave that up to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good evening. You too, sir. Thank you.